But yeah, over on the top right, playing uh, for Vitality and playing as StarCraft II Zerg. It is Solar. And on the left side, playing as the Brood War Protoss. It is Mini. He's coming back. My my bot was promoting stuff unrelated to the tournament, so I had to go <laughs> full on hacker man and run into the living room to change the bot commands there. This is a high stakes cast right now. Yep. We can't be advertising things that we weren't meant to be. That's right. We gotta get the maps right, get the bot commands going right. Yes. I'm actually on a bicycle seat where if I stop pedaling, <laughs> the, the stream will die. Okay, just so you guys understand what we're working with here. I would actually just kind of laugh really hard if Solar just does the same exact thing and this wins is, the exact same fashion. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, thank <laughs> Well, glad we got this one out yeah, of the yeah, way. Right. We remade this map to make sure that, that exact same thing well, happens. These things are going to happen, right? <laughs> Even for Gemini, the stakes are high. He has to keep his... It's like the movie Speed. He has to keep his yeah. APM above 60 or the bus explodes. Yeah, like. if my if my mouse <laughs> hand doesn't correctly observe the game with enough... You That's know, right. It, doesn't, it stutters too much. I'm just going to explode. So, um, last, last time we saw a Roach Ravager Rush, I don't see why Solar wouldn't try that again. Um... Well, he's going to be prepared for it this time. Well, surely, that's the right? thing, right? I mean, Mini's going to have cannons if he does go for that. The more of SC Evo that I watch, the uh, the stronger I feel that you got to go for Reaver. Um, I guess we're going to find out if that's the case as we get more and more games to kind of explore this meta. Um, also, on the map Fighting Spirit, one thing to note is that the way this map's shaped, it's kind of like little triangles in each of the corner, uh, each of the corners of the map. And so the third base of Protoss is basically almost at 12 o'clock. So, like, you're going to be expanding towards them. You can also expand to the south, but it's a little bit tougher. Yeah, we got the first Zealot Pro Press coming in yet again at the Natural. Last time it was able to kill a couple Lings, and that was kind of it. And then the the overwhelming Ling uh, count, and look, there goes, there's the Roach Horn again <laughs> from Solar. Whether or not that's just kind of a reaction to just how to deal with early Ling pre or early Zealot pressure in the, the Brood War mod, not sure, but it feels like he might just try to go for the same thing, especially because they're actually even closer on the, the map this time. Nice surround there on that first Zealot. We'll be able to kill that off. A couple of Lings still do getting killed off as well, but now the Queen is here. And this should be able to help to, I think, get rid of the cell as he's going to get a nice surround again. It's a little hard in this mod, I feel like, to get the, the, the Brood War Zealot pathing. Usually they can kind of man mode, walk their way past yeah. anything, and they can't get easy surrounds. But Yeah, for better or for worse, StarCraft 2 pathing is just cleaner, uh, where I feel like in StarCraft 1, the pathing is like a little bit bumpier. Um, there's like more collision uh, that's like occurring that, that can makes units bounce around a little bit more. So the surround on the Zealot was really clean. So we've got the Robo coming. Uh, he started one Dragoon. This is like a, a rush again here. I mean, he's going to try to come in and um, and hit hard. There is... Uh, sorry, is that a second cannon? What is warping in the middle there? Yeah, that's a second. Yeah, okay. So he's got two cannons. Notice that they're placed like about a hex back from the barracks. So the Roaches can't reach him. He did get the scout off that there are Roaches and extra Lings coming across with that probe. So he did keep that alive long enough to be able to actually get this scout off. And that's going to be big. Concerning the fact that he really had no idea this was coming at all last time. Yeah. So this is going to have a big influence on if he's actually going to be able to defend this or not. The shuttle will be out this time, but again, that's not really going to do too much because there's no units to really juggle or anything. There will be a Reaver coming out right after a supply block for just a little bit, which will delay it for now. But the cannons are up this time, and I mean, Solar's not going to get those free three Zealot kills like he did last time. Yeah, he's going for that pylon. Um... Now, I think the pylon up top, I think th that's going to unpower at least one or maybe even two of the cannons here. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, one is wow. going to be unpowered. The Zealots are a little bit stuck on the outside, so the Lings are going to do a lot of damage. The probes are going to come up here and try to block, but the Lings do slip through. Oh, the second cannon coming back online is actually the perfect timing, because I think Solar was kind of banking on that, not really getting up for the rest of this fight. And I mean, that's going to allow a lot of these Zerglings to just get completely surrounded by the probes and the Zealot. We'll be able to kill those off, but there's still a lot of Ravagers out on the field. Solar doesn't want to lose any of those to the cannons. That would be not really great there, as he does keep that one alive for now. And I mean, all the cannons are going to be gone now, but the Reaver has oh! found its way out. Oh! Finds its what way was to that? the lane. It was like a little boomerang scare, but it went around <laughs> it in a circle. I don't understand what I just saw. Oh, the Reavers just doing dance moves on top of these Lings and Ravagers right now. This is where it's going to get really hard for Solar to actually be able to break into this, sectioning off some Lings into the main base to try and get some harassment done into the main base to hopefully 
split atten uh, split the attention here. Lings are just oh my god, they're just useless against this this Reaver. It's absolutely ridiculous. I will say that the Starcraft one Reaver in the Starcraft two mod, it feels like it's even better than the normal oh. Reaver because the Scarabs are more uh, precise. Yeah. Also, I imagine they don't bug out like they sometimes do in Google, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like it's harder to make them dud. Um, so he's going to send the Reaver across the map. I actually was pretty confident Mini was dead, but um, you know the cannons did manage to pull through here. And Lings are going to be basically useless. Versus cannons and Reavers, there's just nothing you can do. Now, normally in a PvZ, you have... Oh, oh my god! You would have Hydras to try to fight this, but uh, Zerg is organically just always going to have... Um, queens here, and you know the, the queen is a beefy enough unit. It takes a couple shots to kill it, but it is uh, starting to stack that damage over oh. time here. It's kind of interesting because usually we're so used to queens being this kind of uh, end all like har uh, harassment denial unit for Zerg and StarCraft Two, whereas here it's like. Well, I mean, this Reaver and Shuttle is actually doing pretty decent, but actually the corner is not large enough oh for it God. to stay back there. Well, that's so not we'll very StarCraft 2-ish. <laughs> yeah, There's that's... not a whole screen size in the corner of the map <laughs> to hide a floating building. Yeah, we're very used to being able to keep those kind of tucked away on the, on the edges of the map there, but unfortunately not going to be the case here. So that will end up being the denial of the harass for now, but a second Shuttle is already ready with a second Reaver and a Zealot. So this is still going to be a little bit tricky for Solar. He's going to get his queen count back up if he wants to be able to deal with this shuttle. So this is shuttle speed now. It's going to be a lot harder to actually catch this Reaver, although I feel like Solar has done a near-perfect job of dealing with this so far. Oh. Scarab oh. oh, my God. Six more drones. I'm, I have to keep revising my expectations for yeah. these Scarab shots. Like I. Oh, my God. Is there any more? There's one more queen oh, here, but this oh. shuttle isn't even close to dying right now. And now that it does have speed, like you're saying, oh, it's just God. so much harder to track down. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> oh, and my that, God. So, I mean, he could keep roaming here. We're trying to get a third base as solar, but we can't even get enough drones to saturate two, let alone any units to be able to actually deny this Reaper, Reaver harass. So, you know, what's funny about... Um, a lot of these S Evo games I've seen is it does seem to go into Dragoon Reaver. It, what, and what's funny about that is this is really not how you play against a StarCraft 1 Zerg. Dragoon Reaver is really more of like a uh, PvP composition. There are some like kind of cheeky, weird openers you can do to go Dragoon Reaver, but it, it, the more I see it, the more it makes sense. You know, Zerg can't tech into air super fast uh, like they can in StarCraft, um, StarCraft 1, at least in my experience. So the fact that you're kind of able to generate the threat with the Reaver before Mutas can come out, it forces the Zerg to try to defend from the ground, which I think then kind of parlays nicely into the Dragoon tech here. So this is, I think that's two Reavers and uh, two Dragoons, is that yep, correct? that's correct. So it's a little bit more firepower here, but Solar in position. Oh my god, tries to get it. <laughs> Imagine if he actually picks it off with oh, the yeah. Ravager Biles with how fast they are now with the speed. That would be super ridiculous, but I don't expect that to really happen here. Solar's finally going to be able to get some spores up as well in some of these bases, or at least one of them for now, to help deal with the, the shuttle coming in. But, I mean, the, the, the drone count is going to be completely even here with the Protoss, and it's also kind of interesting in that regard because you're so used to, in StarCraft II, expecting the Zerg to be way ahead on economy in terms of just how fast they can actually produce drones and how many bases they need to be on to stay in, ahead of the game or whatever. But in this scenario, I feel like it's not exactly sure which Ray should have the economy advantage, essentially, but... I feel like when we're still at equal drones at this count, uh, this part of the game, it's not a good sign for Zerg. No, this is bad. And, you know, we went from a harass phase in this game. Now we're going to be where um, the Protoss is looking to close it out. Um, you could start to push in here. Kind of a different thing that the Protoss has to deal with, with the fact that you have to kind of yeah. hack and saw your way through all this creep. Um, it's and kind so of an interesting thing because, like, they're... Yeah, like you're saying, it's like completely irrelevant in StarCraft 1 to have to deal with creep yeah, at yeah, all. Like, yeah. There's literally no benefit creep, to it. Creep just lets you build Zerg stuff uh, on creep. So, like, whereas here, it's going to make um, everything a lot faster. He's going to move in. My god, there's so many Dragoons back here. And these Scarab shots are getting so scary. With shuttle speed, he can basically dodge as many times as he wants. I think we may see Solar Tap out here. I don't see... Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. GG. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of funny, too, because, like, you see how wow, 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 wow. Mini was not even really... Uh, you didn't respect the, the Ravager Biles at all there, and he was yeah. just kind of letting them sit inside. So if Solar was not in such a bad spot from 
failing the all in in the beginning. Uh, I'm curious how that micro would have actually ended up playing out because it's yeah. the fact that he's not really used to having to dodge Ravager Biles like that. It's funny because um, it doesn't seem like it matters if you lose a lot of probes when the rush hits. As long as the Reaver gets out, you can like undo all the damage that you've received uh, and come out ahead. But yeah, as far as I can tell, I don't think you can tech into StarCraft 2 mutas in time to actually shut down um, uh, the Reaver. Because in StarCraft 1, that's how you would deal with it. But at the same time, it does seem like that Roach Ravager rush is really good versus a StarCraft 1 Protoss. Like, you basically don't have anything you can do until that Reaver's out. A couple Biles would take out a cannon, which is obviously, it's just, it's stationary. So there's, you know, not much that can be done. Um, and, you know, Roaches and Ravagers can destroy the gateway at the entrance pretty quickly if that's what they choose to target. So we're going to be... Uh, do we, we know this is the right map, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just That's, these sure. are just StarCraft 2 maps now. Okay. Can't mess those up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, we're going to be going into MC versus Jadong next. What Whoa. year is it? <laughs> MC versus Jadong. Um, MC, by the way, has been active in StarCraft 1, I think, for at least a few years. I don't know if he's right now very active. Um, and Jadong, I mean, he's basically had, across StarCraft 2 and StarCraft 1, some of the, the most success in both games. Yeah, I mean, he had, of course, that incredible run back in 2013 or so when he was just getting second places at, like, every event he was going yeah. to. And it was, like, this I huge buildup and all of it to not really end up coming to much fruition <laughs> because he just kind of loses the SOS in the, the BlizzCon finals. Yeah. And then he sort of redeems himself with that Asus Rog win with, at the very end, which was kind of like a not-that-important tournament, you, but it was just kind of cool to see him win. how bad Blizzard wanted Jadong to win? Oh, God, Because I'm if sure. Jadong were to be a world champion in StarCraft two, that would probably have been enough to make everybody in Korea switch to StarCraft two. at yeah. least for a while. yeah. I mean, it would have been absolutely huge. It would, yeah. I mean, there's so many people just even from StarCraft Two that wanted to win. He was just such a, a famous, you know, person from from Brood War. I was a huge fan of him as well. It was just cool to see him doing yeah. well in StarCraft Two. He was just really cool to how he kind of embraced the the foreigner culture as well, coming over to EG, enjoying the team well, house vibe and everything. Yeah, well, he's a really charismatic guy. You know, some pro gamers are uh, much more introverted, but you know, the thing with Jadong is he's he's charming, he's marketable. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I mean, he had a big impact on StarCraft kind of becoming popular. Uh, so we're still waiting, I think, for Jadong to join. Uh, yeah. MC is in our game. and um, oh, We're going to have two barcodes going against each other. That's going to be fun. <laughs> two try-hard barcodes here.